Hey, so baking ambient occlusion maps for better performance on WebGL, 3.js, and Babylon.js. By default on WebGL, it looks a bit like Eevee here. Um, it's a bit flat unless you add shadows and uh, you can even add SSAO, but um, it's a performance hit. Uh, in, in cycles, uh, we, we get this for free, I suppose, in, in a way. And it just looks way, way better, obviously. So you can get much better performance results uh, by baking that ambient occlusion into an image texture, like here. Just uh, add an image te texture, click new. Um, don't use an alpha. Uh, I'm using a 2K image here at the moment. And I, I get 60 frames per second on, uh, on WebGL with this as well. Um, I'm using non-color data. I don't, I'm not using an alpha, it's, it's not needed. Then I have the plane selected on the uh, in the in the viewport, and then the bake settings in cycles. I choose ambient occlusion. Don't really need to change any of the other settings. Um, make sure I've got the image selected. Make sure I've got the plane selected. Hit bake. Speed this up. So there's our ambient occlusion map which is basically the, the self-shadowing that occurs between objects. Plug that into the base color. You can see what it looks like on the, on the plane. Um, okay, so that works great. Um, but to get that ambient occlusion image loaded in GLTF format or GLB format in WebGL in 3.js and Babylon.js, the principal shader doesn't have a, an output node for or an input node for ambient occlusion. So there's a, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. One is this, this method where we just create any node, uh, like an image node, and then um, press control G to, to, to create a group uh, around that node. Delete the image texture and then select the group input nodes, go over to the group tab and just delete whatever's in there. This works with anything like a, color ramp or it doesn't really matter what you use. Add an input, call it occlusion, very important, O-C-C-L-U-S-I-O-N, and that's it. So you've got a group, a group node here, which is basically empty, and you have to, you have to also name that GLTF space settings. Very important that you um, get that, get that naming correct as well, GLTF space settings. And this just lets the, the, the Blender exporter tell um, the GLTF in, um, loaders that this is a, an ambient occlusion map. So when you drag it into Babylon JS, this is the uh, original scene without without any ambient occlusion, just for comparison's sake. And then if we drag in the the one that, that uh, has just been exported, you can see the ambient occlusion just automatically loads in there on top of the image texture, which this one doesn't have an image texture at the moment. So quite a big difference. Um, and this isn't even with it customized yet either. So the 3GS loader, again, this is the default, just to get a base and an idea of what it looks like. And it looks so much better with, you know, with occlusion on it. And again, these, this has not been this is just straight out the box. Um, the next step I'm going to show is to bake the color into a color map. So you don't have, don't even use the ambient occlusion. Um, this way you'll get better results. I, I find I get much better results this way, but sometimes it's useful to know the other way as well, because you can use that automatically. Uh, whereas this one limits you to just the color. So I'm multiplying the ambient occlusion by the color and I'm subtracting to increase the contrast um, of the ambient occlusion node. And that way you can you can have fine granular control over uh, how, exactly how dark your ambient occlusion looks. You can even add in a transparency node and there's all kinds of things you could do. You could really ramp it up and then make it transparent. There's tons of, tons of things you could do. Now I'm creating another image texture, which is sRGB, selecting it, selecting the plane, Take, uh, removing direct, indirect color, and clicking bake. Fast forward this bit. 
Um, so now we've got our ambient occlusion baked into the image texture. Pretty cool. Um, and much better. Mm, not necessarily better, but you get you can get some more interesting results this way. See, this one is still quite subtle, and that's that's good. I mean, it uh, depends on what lighting conditions you're using in your scene. Um, and this is just an example as well. So again, uh, with no ambient occlusion, and then with ambient occlusion baked into the color texture. M massive difference. I think I think it looks really cool. And this is just another example of one that's been made a bit more. Um, s s this is just using a different node. I think I used a multiply node, uh, um, a screen node instead of a multiply one on that one. Um, 3JS, that's the original without ambient occlusion. With ambient occlusion. And then again with ambient occlusion, but with I think I think I used to set to screen for the ambient occlusion to screen against the color. So debug tools, Babylon JS are pretty handy. You can go open a performance monitoring tool. Um, I'm getting 60 frames a second if I'm not recording with OBS, but even with it, I get 50, 45 to 55 uh, with tons of other things open as well. I do have a, a 3090 though, so um, I'm sure that helps. If you go into the materials, click ground, and yeah, you can see your textures. You can manually add in more textures. Um, I've just got the normal metallic and, and albedo, or the color, or the diffuse, however you want to use to describing it. Uh, another thing to look out for, you can see here with the tree, with the roots that go underneath the uh, plane, um, they also pick up ambient occlusion on the plane. So it doesn't matter what side of the plane it's on, it'll pick up ambient occlusion. So you, you get weird artifacts if you uh, don't think about what you're doing with um, ambient occlusion. That's it. It was useful. Cheers.